hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Jan Grudich, and uh, I work for Red Hat in the desktop team. And I'm going to talk about uh, integration of Qt applications, uh, how this can be achieved, and and the current state of our pr attempts to integrate uh, Qt applications into GNOME. So why do we need integration? Uh, we have uh, Qt uh, available on so many platforms, and each platform has its own style, uh, behavior, and so on. And this even gets worse when you use when on Linux, where you have many desktop environments, and all, again, each of them have uh, different behavior or different style. So if you imagine this scenario, and you use a, a dark team like me, and you would expect that uh, if you run uh, any application, it would fit into your desktop. It would has it would have a uh, same color and and so on. So for this uh, to solve this problem, uh, Qt has a thing called uh, Qt Platform Abstraction, uh, which is uh, uh, a platform abstraction layer. It was introduced in Qt five. It's based on plugins, and uh, we have uh, two main uh, platform plugins. One is uh, called Qt Platform Integration, and it's mostly for system stuff. Like if you, like Windows has its own system integration, plat uh, platform integration, or iOS or Android, and even on Linux, you need a uh, your own integration uh, plugin for Wayland, for Mir, or X11. This can be done through Qt Platform Integrate. And the next one uh, we use in Qt GNOME platform to integrate your uh, Qt application into GNOME is uh, called Qt Platform Team. And uh, here you can modify and control stuff uh, visible to the user. So here you can modify the font, color, and whatever you will see. Here I have a small example uh, of some components using uh, icons and colors uh, directly from the Qt platform team. I can show you when I uh, change some uh, to another color. Uh, and when I change font, oh no, font. Oh, I mean icons. And I, when I restart my presentation, oh, I started here. And go. You see that the icons are different. They are now. Uh, switch to Advaita icons, and the color used for radio buttons and the glow is also different because I changed it here to be pink. So th this is all controlled by, because I'm now running uh, KDE, this is now controlled by uh, uh, our KDE platform plugin, platform team plugin, which reads uh, the color I have configured here and the icons I have configured. So and and this then used here in my presentation. This is a live demo, so okay. Yes. So just briefly, uh, what stuff you can find in Qt platform integration when you want to support a new platform or system. Uh, the most you need a Qt, Qt platform window. Uh, where you uh, define all the drawing of windows, positioning, and this stuff. You mostly just need it only for, for a new platform. So this is just mentioning it here. Uh, font database, it's obvious. Each system has a different font database. So if you want to provide that for your tool for a new system, you need to implement that. The same for clipboard, accessibility, and this stuff. 
So the most interesting uh, thing is the uh, good platform team, which is uh, the thing you will be interested in when you want to uh, integrate good applications into your desktop. So what stuff we have here? Uh, the first thing uh, you probably want to implement is a uh, team hint where uh, you can uh, define which icons uh, you want to use. This, this function basically uh, provides you uh, enum and you return the value uh, for the for the enum you want to. So like uh, in example, one hint is uh, icon. So when you want to use some specific icon, you just return for that uh, like in for GNOME Advaita, or you read uh, it from the GNOME configuration and return that. The other thing is a palette, where you read or define color configuration and just again return it. And when uh, a cute application uh, is uh, uh, loads this plugin, then this plugin will provide that information to the application. So. Uh, then uh, the other interesting thing, uh, icon engine. That's uh, if you need some specific stuff for icons in KDE. This is just uh, uh, only wrapper about Q icon engine, and we don't add anything special. So I don't. If you want some specific stuff like overlays uh, over your icons, you can use this. K bindings, this is obvious. If you want to have some default shortcuts to be set to your application, you need to uh, implement that. Platform dialog helpers, this is used uh, when you want to provide the native file dialogs. Uh, as a nice example, I even use this to uh, implement a portal. Uh, for Flatpak, where basically instead of uh, opening a file chooser, I needed to call just a, a deba uh, I need to do a debug call to Flatpak portal frontend. So each uh, you you have like four types of dialogs and where uh, each dialog. Uh, uh, dialog helper class provides you like an abstract class. So instead of uh, like implementing open function for that platform uh, for that file dialog, instead of opening it, I just did uh, the the bus call for to the Flatpak portal frontend. So this this stuff can also be implemented using this. And uh, then the last. Interesting thing, probably standard button text. This can be used for uh, dialogues if you want to modify the standard text, like usually it's uh, OK button or cancel if you want something special. You can change that by using this thing. And I think, uh, which is not really part of uh, Qt platform abstraction uh, is uh, Qt style. This uh, stuff is used uh, when you want to uh, when you want to draw or change how uh, primitives or controls are draw. So we use that uh, for Advaita Qt style, where uh, each uh, primitive and is defined by using Q Painter, and you just say draw a rectangle, draw the text inside, and this stuff. This is all done through Q style. It's not really easy stuff to do because it's really complex, but someone has to do it. So, this is actually uh, Advaita Q style. We we did for uh, to integrate good applications to, into GNOME. 
and uh, about uh, uh, our projects uh, which uh, we we are working on to bring you your uh, uh, Qt applications into GNOME, Qt GNOME platform. Uh, currently, we have the most basic stuff, like we read uh, font you, you have set in GNOME, we read uh, what icons you have, and so on. Uh, yesterday, I got a pull request uh, even for native GTK dialogues. So in the next release, we will have native GTK dialogues. They are stolen from Qt, Qt directly because uh, like a month to months ago, I think, the Qt uh, GTK dialogues were still implemented in GTK2, so we couldn't use that. And now with uh, Qt uh, 5.7, seven uh, GTK dialogues are now written in GTK3, so we can use that. We just basically st can steal the code, otherwise we would need to depend on latest Qt. And another thing uh, uh, we need to implement, it would be possible, uh, is the, because in GNOME uh, you have a specific menu bar, you have just the first, uh, like uh, you have only one menu item in the, uh, you see in the shell, and the rest is in the application. In Qt, we have uh, every all the menu is in the application, and uh, we don't show any menu in the GNOME shell panel, or how do you call it? So this uh, can be probably also implemented using Qt GNOME pl uh, platform, Qt, Qt platform team, uh, using uh, Qt menu menu bar. And regarding Advaita Qt. Uh, it, you see, it looks quite good. Uh, the, the thing we need to implement is the uh, dark version of that, because right now in Advaita Qt all the colors are hard coded. So this also needs uh, support of Qt GNOME platform, where we need to return the color palette and then Advaita the color palette uh, based on. Uh, team you use in GNOME, whether it's dark or normal color, and then Advaita would need to be rewritten to use uh, the palette, so it would uh, pick the dark color if we return dark palette and this stuff. Okay, I think I'm done. I also, one thing I want to mention that uh, Qt platform abstraction, the only downside, downside of that is that uh, it's not really documented. So if you want to implement your Qt platform plugin, you basically uh, need to go to their source code and check that or uh, check the existing platform plugins, like the one we have in KD or Qt GNOME platform on uh, the ones provided by Qt itself. There are some of them. And the other problem is that the API is uh, mostly private and there are no guarantees uh, that the API won't break in the next release. So you need to be careful with that and check if you develop some platform plugin, then you need to check whether it still compiles and works against the next Qt version. Okay, so if you have any questions. So um, uh, how does it work technically? Did you really re-implement a whole QPA? Like taking the X11 QPA and, and adding the GNOME stuff on top, or is the GNOME stuff something that plugs into the X11 QPA or the uh, Wayland QPA? Oh uh, no! For for GNU, Qt GNOME platform, you only need to implement Qt platform team, and uh, because every Qt application loads Qt platform integration separately and Qt platform team separately, so you can use a uh, platform integration like uh, X11 or Wayland and platform team, which provides just this style and icons and this stuff separately. So you just implement uh, the stuff uh, 
regarding the look and the stuff and and that's all. Yeah, okay, that so sounds a lot saner than what I understood. <laughs> you, you mostly won't need to implement good platform integration. It's basically only when you want new to add support for a new system or new desktop environment. Or no, I mean new, uh, like Mir or Valent. No. Yes. So you restarted your presentation to show us the different look? Yeah, is, that yeah. a, is that a fundamental limitation? Do you have to restart to change the plugin you load? Or can you do it at runtime? Uh, yeah, if, if you want to uh, application, if, if you want to uh, pick up a new platform team, you need to restart it. But if you if you like ch change cars, and this depends whether the platform plugin uh, implements uh, updating of that during the uh, when the application is running. This kind of don't work for this, but it works for. A regular Qt application, it works. This is in QML, so I don't know how this is internally done, but usually it works. Then you change font, and not about I'm not sure about icons, but changing font works. You don't need to restart anything. So as you're talking about QML, um, uh, I've got a question about Advita Qt. This is re-implementing the Advita look and feel in Qt, or is it using um, GTK to actually render the stuff? Uh, sorry, one more time, so, um, what, what does Advita Qt do? Is it, is it just uh, mocking or redoing re the Advita style in Qt, or...? Are you using um, uh, like uh, some weird hybrid rendering in GTK, then displaying it in Qt thing? You mean uh, in QML the Advaita style? Yeah. Uh, well, in, you cannot uh, use uh, uh, Advaita style won't be used for create it, and if you want to, because uh, usually Qt applications are written uh, using Qt widgets. And uh, QML use, uh, uses uh, Qt quick controls, so we don't have uh, Advaita style for because these are uh, styled differently. You need to write Qt quick control style or how this is called for Advaita 2. I don't have that yet because there, there are no well. Every application in desktop is usually written in QWidgets, using QWidgets, so there's no need for that right now. That, or it, 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 ha it doesn't have uh, priority right now, I would say. Um, yeah, but um, the, the, the part of the question was also, um, are you redoing the styling yourself? So whenever Advaita changes, you have to change your yeah, Advaita yeah, queue? Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, that's unfortunate, but yeah. You. Are there plans to make the the style look more like the GTK version of Adweta? Because it looks quite a bit off. It'd be nice to have it pixel perfect. Yeah. And that's quite a bit different. Really? I, I don't know. I, I don't use that, so it looks good to me, it's, but I don't know really. It's, it's a bit different. To write a Q style, it's really complicated. And Sorry, I, I'm a designer and I nitpick pixels, and that's a, quite a bit off. That's I was just wondering if that's like an earlier version or this is the current version. But uh, for plans? this screenshot, I scaled. Uh, I had to use a scale, so maybe the proportions are not the same as. Okay, so the proportions possibly changed. Yeah, but. Um, even still, the style is a little bit different. Is there any plan to possibly improve the style to make it more uh, like closer to pixel perfect of the GTK version, or at least the current GTK version of Adwaita? Yeah, we would definitely want that, but it's need. It's not me who is working on that. Okay. So. Thanks. Any other questions? 
if you are curious about Valent, for most of the stuff, uh, this will work even on Valent, except uh, the file dialogs where because if we, for native, like uh, native GTK dialogs, we uh, use GTK directly. So for like for Wayland, we need to use a different code to actually make it work on Wayland. Are there platforms where Qt draws with native widgets like on Windows or OS X, or is it in all platforms that you re-implement the platform style? Uh, each each uh, platform implements the Qt style the same way like in Adveta, but this is all already provided by Qt itself for the most uh, used platforms like Windows, iOS. No more questions? Uh, so where's this hosted? Where can we go to file bugs or send patches to make it closer to pixel perfect? Uh, this, both Qt Gnome platform and Advaita are on GitHub. You can find them under those names. So. Oh, no more questions. Okay. Thank you.